You're listening to the Love Over Addiction Podcast. Hi, Joe here again this week. We're back with more from our community, and today it's all about thriving, truly thriving. Because when we love someone suffering from addiction, it's easy to get caught up in their issues. And when we're caught up in anything, especially someone struggling with addiction, we can't thrive. It's impossible. When we're able to take some time and focus away from them and their addiction, that gives us power. That gives us space and energy to explore other things to focus on. A lot of times we hear from women in our community of the profound experience that they have when they take energy out of their partner suffering from addiction. They realize how much they were putting into managing the addiction in the first place and how much they were really losing themselves. And listen, here's the other thing. The idea of taking energy and attention and focus off of your partner suffering from addiction can be really scary because it's new. And if you're not putting the energy and focus there, maybe you feel like things will fall apart. That is a completely reasonable fear. And of course you feel that way. There's never any judgment here. Give yourself space to feel and experience what you will. And when you're ready, Think about thriving. Let's hear how our community thrives. Their voices are full of wisdom, and these women that you hear talking actually understand what you're going through more than anyone else ever could. I hope you find comfort in that. I hope you find encouragement and hope in simply hearing their voices and knowing that you are not alone. I would love to start belly dancing classes. It's something I've always wanted to do. For 2020, I'm going to increase my activity with others. I joined the Rotary Club last week, and I'm hoping this is going to be the route for me to do so. I plan and started a more regimented exercise this year and plan on continuing with that. My true goal is to 100% detach from my now separated alcoholic husband and not allow myself on the roller coaster with him even for an hour. Go on a holiday with my girls. I recently had my guitar redone and it's beautiful and I want to start playing it again. I'm retiring in April of 2020 and I'm looking forward to making more greeting cards and taking road trips. I want to keep working this program and applying what I've learned and continue improving my life. I have some big goals for my business that I am excited about. I really want to start eating healthier, and I want to start getting my body moving more instead of sitting and feeling sorry for myself. Uh, It's time to take care of myself. I want to learn to enjoy the many positive aspects of my life and the huge life around me that I have been ignoring. Most importantly, surround myself with positive people encourage me to be a better me. I'm committing to pursuing counseling and digging into my own patterns and finding freedom. I want to pick up the guitar and practice again so I can write those songs I know are dying to come out of me. Hey guys, so there are two things that I am currently working on. One is getting up earlier and not hitting the snooze button. And the second one, this is going to sound a little silly, but the second one is not complaining about the weather. I'm trying to not complain in general, but am really a wimp when it comes to being cold. So um, I'm really being intentional about not complaining as the seasons are changing. I commit to loving myself and working hard to get my life back with the help of God in this program. I'm going to renew a goal I've made a couple of times. Once a month, I like to get out and explore someplace new. I live in Northern California, and there are so many great hikes and small towns, new restaurants, beaches, and all kinds of things to explore, all within about a day's drive or so. So 
sometimes I like to take a friend, but sometimes I like to just go alone. Uh, I'm going to try to get back to this. I'm committed to becoming self-sufficient in every way. Big task, and I'm ready for all of it. The good, the bad, and the ugly. I am committed to learning more about my feelings when I become triggered. The more I become mindful, the more I will grow into the confident woman I know I am. I will do two useful things every day besides getting showered and dressed and making the bed. I know that doesn't sound like growth from codependency, but it is growth and self-satisfaction. I don't mind that I'm lazy and read a lot, but I am so proud of myself when I start catching up on chores that have been hanging over my head for a while. And there you have it. Those are the powerful words from the women in our community who are focusing on themselves for maybe the first time in a long time. And you can too. It's their way of thriving. It's their way of putting energy and attention back to where it should be and letting go of their partner's addiction. If you're ready to give it a try, check out the Love Over Addiction online program at loveoveraddiction.com slash L-O-A. It can be scary, and it is new, but it is worth trying. I hope that you'll join us. And, of course, we thank you so much for listening to this podcast. You all are the reason that we do what we do. So thank you. We'll be thinking about you over the next few days, and we'll talk to you next week. This podcast is created for your support, encouragement, and entertainment with Michelle's personal thoughts and beliefs. From one woman to another, bonded together by the fact we love someone suffering from addiction. This is not intended as a substitute for therapy or advice from a professional.